This is the 29th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In our previous video, we created a backup solution for the computers connected to our home network. However, as our NAS is now acting as a central location for all of the data stored on our network, we have inadvertently created a single point of failure, which means that if something should happen to our NAS, we could potentially lose all of the data that it stores. So to get around this problem, we need to create some sort of backup strategy. Ideally, our backup strategy should consist of both an on-site and off-site backup. An on-site backup typically uses some sort of local storage device, such as an external hard drive, CD or magnetic tape to store a copy of our data. This means that if something should happen to the data on our NAS, for example, it becomes corrupted or deleted, because we have a backup copy on premises, we can quickly recover our data. However, if something should happen to our premises, for example, a fire or theft, our on-site backups could become affected. So we need to think about having an off-site backup. An off-site backup is simply the storage of our data in a remote location, which could be either a friend's house or the use of a cloud-based storage solution. So in this video, we are going to take a look at an application called Hyper Backup to specifically create a simple on-site backup. Then in the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at creating an off-site backup by using a cloud-based storage solution. In order to create an on-site backup, we will be using this newly purchased USB external hard drive. As this hard drive will be permanently connected to our NAS, we need to ensure that it has sufficient storage capacity for our backup needs. As the total capacity for our NAS is currently 5 terabytes, and most of the storage on our NAS remains empty, this 4 terabyte hard drive should be adequate for our current and future needs. Let's get started by installing Hyper Backup onto our NAS. First, we need to log into Distation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the DSM's desktop, we need to select Package Center. When Package Center opens, we're shown a screen that displays all of the packages that can be installed onto this model of Synology NAS. In order to find the Hyper Backup package, we can use the provided filters. If we change the category filter from All Packages to Backup, Hyper Backup will be listed as one of the utilities we can install. An alternative method for finding packages within Package Center is via the search bar. If we type Hyper Backup and then press Enter on the keyboard, the Hyper Backup package will once again be listed. Let's select Install and take a look at the process for installing this package onto our NAS. First, we're presented with an installation wizard. As the NAS that we're working from has been configured with multiple volumes, we now need to choose which volume we want to install Hyper Backup onto. As Hyper Backup is an application that does not have any special installation requirements, we will be installing this package onto volume 1. We will leave Always Install New Packages on this volume in the future unticked, as this will offer us greater flexibility as to where we can install other packages. When we select Next, we're asked to confirm our settings. You can see that Hyper Backup will automatically start after it's been installed. Let's select Apply. The Hyper Backup package is now downloaded and installed onto our NAS. With Hyper Backup now installed and running, let's close Package Center. Next, we need to locate a spare USB port on the back of our Synology NAS and connect our USB hard drive. We now need to wait until we have confirmation that our NAS has correctly identified the external hard drive. Let's now select Main Menu and locate Hyper Backup. 
When we select the Hyper Backup icon, the application will load to display a backup wizard. You can see that under Backup Destination, we are presented with three groups that display the different types of backup destinations that we can use with Hyper Backup. First, we have Synology, which will allow us to back up to USB storage devices, a second remote Synology NAS, and Synology's C2 cloud storage servers. Under File Server, we have a number of options that will allow us to back up our Synology NAS to a non Synology NAS. Finally, we have Cloud Service, which allows us to back up our NAS to most of the main third party cloud based storage solutions. As we want to back up to the external USB hard drive that we've connected to our NAS, let's select Local Folder and USB. When we select Next, we're asked to specify our backup destination settings. If we select the Shared Folder drop down menu, we can see all of the network shares that we've created on our NAS. If we search this list, we should be able to see our external USB hard drive. In this example, it's called USB Share 1. After selecting USB Share 1, in the directory field, we need to give our backup some sort of meaningful title. When we select Next, we're asked which folders on our NAS we wish to back up. By placing a tick in the tick box that corresponds with a particular network share, we are instructing Hyper Backup to back up the data in that network share. You may have noticed that beside each share we have a small arrow. If we select one of these arrows, any child folders will be displayed. If we were to check one of the tick boxes next to a child folder, we are instructing Hyper Backup to back up that child folder but not its parent. Let's change this setting so that we back up both the parent and the child folder. When we select Next, we're asked if we want to back up a specific set of applications. You may have noticed that this list does not include all of the applications that we have installed on our NAS. This is because this application list only includes applications which use data that cannot be automatically generated. So by backing up these applications, we are ensuring that we can restore both the applications and any additional data these applications might use. When we select Next, we are presented with backup settings. These settings provide us with additional options that allow us to control our backups. First, we need to give our backup task a meaningful name. Next, we have an option if ticked, we'll send a notification about the status of this backup task. However, in order for us to receive a notification, we will need to enable notifications on our NAS. While we have not yet enabled notifications on this NAS, as we will be looking at email notifications in a future video, we will leave this setting ticked. As you can see, Enable Configuration Backup is greyed out, but refers to Backing Up User and Group Settings. We would enable the option Remove Destination External Device when Backup Task has been successfully finished if we were using Backup Rotation to make backups to multiple external USB hard drives. While this option makes it easier for us to have our monthly, weekly and daily backups on separate drives, as this would be an expensive type of backup schedule, we will not be enabling this option. And instead, we will be leaving our external USB hard drive permanently connected to our NAS. Compress backup data, we will leave ticked as this will help to reduce the size of our backups. Enable Backup Schedule allows us to control when our backups are made. We can choose the days and times when this backup task will start. As making backups is best done when no one is actually using our NAS, we will set our backups to run every day at 1 a.m. Next, we have Enable Integrity Check Schedule. This option is a method for checking that the data being backed up can be restored to our NAS. Once again, we can choose the day and time when the integrity check will run. However, let's leave this option on its defaults. Check data allows us to set how much time Hyper Backup will spend checking the integrity of our data. 
If we were to set check data to zero minutes, all of our backup data would be fully checked each time the integrity check ran. Enable client-side encryption we will leave disabled. This is because on our model of Synology NAS, if we were to encrypt our backup, it would affect the performance of our NAS. However, as you probably have a newer model of NAS than the one that we are using, it would be a good idea to consider enabling client-side encryption to protect your backup data. When we select Next, we are shown the rotation settings for our NAS. Backup rotation in this instance is referring to rotating data rather than physically rotating hard drives as we mentioned earlier. This allows Hyper Backup to better manage its backup storage capacity by deleting older or redundant backups to free up storage space on our external USB hard drive. If we enable backup rotation, the first option is from the earliest version, which according to Synology will delete the oldest backup that this task has made. As you can see here, we have a small chart that identifies what would constitute as being the oldest backup. Smart Recycle is designed to keep hourly backups from the last 24 hours, then keep daily versions from the previous month. For backups that are older than a month, it will keep weekly backup versions. Finally, Customized Retention Policy allows us to set specific rules about how long we retain backups and which versions we keep. Unfortunately, the way that rotation settings have been described by Synology, it can make it a little difficult to fully understand. So let's simply use the default option, which is from the earliest versions, and then consider changing the setting maximum number of versions. By changing the maximum number of versions, we can adjust the default settings so that rather than have Hyper Backup keep nine months of daily backups, we could set Hyper Backup to keep three years, two years, or one year's worth of backups before it starts backup rotation. When we select Apply, we are asked if we wish to start our first backup. Let's select Yes. Hyper Backup will now start to process the data on our NAS. It will then check how big the backup file will be. Next, it will back up any applications that we've selected for backup, before finally backing up our data. The speed at which Hyper Backup can make its backups will be dependent on how much data we have and how fast both the NAS hard drives and our external USB hard drive can read and write data. In this example, it took around 15 minutes to back up 12 gigabytes of data. However, as this first backup creates a baseline for any subsequent backups, future backups will be a lot faster as Hyper Backup will only back up files that have been added or changed on our NAS. This is because Hyper Backup is intelligent enough to know not to continually back up files that have already been saved to our backup task, which in turn will reduce the amount of storage space that this backup task will need from our external USB hard drive. Once the backup has been successfully completed, we will receive a notification from within the DSM's desktop. If we select the notification icon, we can see confirmation that a backup has been made. To confirm the location where our backup has been saved to, if we open File Station and then locate and select USB Share, we should find that a single file has been created called Synology NAS Backup, which is the name that we gave to our backup file when we created the backup task in the Hyper Backup Wizard. Within this single file is a compressed copy of all of the files stored on our NAS. Over time, the size of this file will increase as Hyper Backup continually adds backup copies of our data to this single file. However, Hyper Backup will start to use rotation in order to try and prevent the size of this file from exceeding the capacity of our external USB hard drive. If we wish to review or adjust any of the settings for our backup, if we return to Hyper Backup and confirm that we're working with the correct backup task, by selecting Settings, 
we can review or adjust the folders that will be backed up. Review or add applications to be backed up. Adjust the basic settings for our backup. Review or change our backup schedule. And finally, adjust our backup rotation. So to recap, in this video we created an on-site backup using Hyper Backup and an external USB hard drive. We created our backup by first installing Hyper Backup onto our NAS and then creating a backup task from within the Hyper Backup application. After allowing our newly created backup task to run, we noted where our backups were being saved to and quickly took a look at adjusting the settings for our backup task. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at using Hyper Backup to create an offsite backup using Synology C2 cloud based storage solution.